Good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Bit of a grey and dismal day outside where I am here. Um, so hopefully a bit brighter where you are. Um, and I do hope that you're all keeping safe, keeping well, um, washing your hands, obviously, and, uh, and, and doing what we need to do at the moment to get through this, uh, this difficult time. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us. We've got a, an interesting session this afternoon. Um, we've called it super fast modeling and supercharging your SketchUp workflow. Um, and the idea behind this session is really just to share some um, some tips and tricks around some um, some plugins that we've got for SketchUp um, that you can access to um, essentially model a little bit quicker. Um, we all know how good and how easy SketchUp is to use out of the box. Um, and really this is just to, to show you that there are lots of um, additional tools that you can put into SketchUp to, to really um, start speeding your workflows up, um, doing things a lot easier and saving yourself a lot of time to be a bit more productive in your workflows. Um, so hopefully you can all hear me and you can all see my screen. Um, if someone could maybe just use their panel on the right hand side to just stick their hand up and give me a little wave just to make sure that I am nice and clear. Perfect. Thank you, Diana. That is lovely. Um, and yeah, we'll get started. So the session's being recorded. So um, once it's been recorded, I'll, uh, I'll convert the session and um, we'll get that up on our Elm Tech YouTube channel in due course. So if you uh, if you can't stick around for the whole session today or you wanna watch it again or or subscribe to our YouTube channel and, and, uh, and share it with your colleagues and friends, then uh, it'll be up on there shortly after it's been finished. Um, and secondly, and before we get started, is if you have a question at any point, you are all on mute due to the number of people on the call this afternoon, um, but you have got the ability to type in a question using the panel on the right hand side and uh, we'll come to a open Q&A session at the end where if there's any questions that we're able to answer on the call, um, we'll do that at the end of the session. So um, I hate death by PowerPoint, so you'll be really pleased to know that that is the only slide that I had to share on PowerPoint, which is fantastic. And we're going to spend pretty much all of this uh, this session directly inside of SketchUp. Um, so let's get into it. I'm using SketchUp Pro 2020. Um, pretty much everything I'm going to show you is also available for um, slightly older versions of the SketchUp if you're not on the latest ones. Um, but yeah, they're, they are compatible with, uh, with the latest and the older versions as well. Um, and the ones I'm going to start with this afternoon I'm really just going to show you some um, some quick things that you might think, yeah, okay, that that's okay, or or what's the point in that? Um, but they really do help you an awful lot in your workflows. And actually, the first one I'm going to show you is is one of my favourites. Um, it's called Selection Toys. Um, I've purposely got a completely out of the box interface here, um, so the workspace that I'm using is has not got any other tools apart from the defaults loaded, just so I can I can literally load them up one by one um, and show you as we use them. So if I come up to my toolbars, um, and we will start by talking about selection toys. Um, so I really like this. Um, I use a number of different uh, design pieces of software um, from from SketchUp to, um, to things like 3ds Max, um, um, uh, other things as well. So, um, I'm used to being able to very quickly switch between different selection types. Now, we all know how easy SketchUp is to use. You basically have faces and you have edges and you can use those to create geometry, which is fantastic. Um, but one thing that is um, sometimes quite, not difficult, but time consuming is being very specific about how you're making your selections. Um, so for example, if I wanted to just select all of the edges of this box that I've just put together, Yes, I can hold down control and I can come through and start selecting edges. But using selection toys, I can literally put a box around the whole thing and I have green icons to create a selection and red icons to remove a selection. So if I just want to select all of my edges, I can put a box around everything that I would like to potentially select and I can say, OK, selection toys, just choose my ed edges. It will deselect everything else in, in my selection set um, and only select my edges. I could do the same with faces. So if I make another selection and say, just select my faces, it will deselect everything bar the faces. That could become really useful when you're going through and working on maybe more complex geometry, um, large models where you're, you're really trying to ascertain what's going on or, or make a very specific selection. It just speeds things up really nicely. 
You can also do the same thing with a deselect. So if I make a selection and I've accidentally selected some faces, I can say, do you know what? Just deselect those faces and it will go ahead and deselect them for me so that I'm only choosing those objects that I would like inside of SketchUp. Um, I particularly like the ability to bulk select or unbulk select groups and components. Again, if you've got a really detailed model, you can just go ahead and make a selection and say, go ahead and only select the components within my selection or go ahead and deselect the components within my selection. Again, that, that really helps when you're going through your workflow. Um, so tiny tool, minimal space to install, installs really quickly. Um, it's available through the extension warehouse. Um, and this one's a free free one as well, which is great. Um, but it, it's massively useful, um, you know, just to stick that up there in your bar and, and be able to use that to, to go and filter down your selection is really, really powerful. So get out there and install selection toys, first of all, whether you're new or a, or a, or a pro user of this, it's, uh, it's, it's really useful. Um, another really small one that I use an awful lot is called Weld. Um, again, this is a, a little freebie. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a hidden gem, to be honest. But um, if I go to my extensions drop down, uh, we've got Weld down here. Only two buttons. We can either weld something or we can choose our settings. Um, and I'm going to show this uh, in a couple of workflows because it does work quite well. Um, if you've used any um, other CAD software before that's more 2D based, you'll be used to the term polyline. Um, if I just go ahead and just really quick example, just draw a freehand curve. So I'm just going to come in here and just draw a bit of an S shape here for SketchUp. Now, obviously that curve is a single element. If I then come and add to that with a bit more of a curve either side, like that, and then maybe I want to um, close this off to create a 3D shape to then pull this up. So I create my shape. I choose to pull that upwards and I have my 3D shape. Okay. Now, typically, there we go, um, you get these join lines. So the first reason I like this is wherever you've got, you know, multiple lines joined together, as soon as you pull that up, you'll get these, these join lines because you have two physical lines that are joined together um, because I have, you know, a line here and a line here. Between those two lines, you will get a crease. Now, Using weld, I can get around that. So if I just put a selection around all of this and then use my selection toys to say, um, just select my edges, I can say extensions and weld. Um, and what I will get is a single continuous loop now around this shape. So in other words, I can literally go around the whole thing and then I have a continuous loop so that if I now use my, um, uh, my push pull, to bring that up, that join line or, or crease line or, or, or whatever you want to call it, um, the edge that was there before is now gone. Um, so I can create a single continuous loop, which A, helps me in instances where I might have more curved or aesthetic geometry that has lots of creases and you want to uh, reduce that, we can weld the lines together. Um, but it can also help um, if you're working um, with intersecting faces. So, for example, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to keep this nice and simple today um, with lots of different examples that are just off the cuff um, to try and keep away from um, any smoke and mirrors. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and draw two circles. Um, let's just go with this one uh, slightly smaller and then we'll just bring that one out to the side. So I've got these two components. Uh, if I select them. So face here and face here. I'm just going to go down to uh, my right click menu and say that I want to intersect my selection. Um, and what that will do is it will just give me this intersecting edge that runs around where these two components intersect. But what you get is this, you know, single segment. Um, so those segments are just split into facets almost. And again, in instances like this, it might be that we want to look at that side on. We want to go ahead and select all of those edges from our model and then we might want to say extensions and weld to be able to go ahead and make a single loop of those edges okay it tidies up the model uh, it makes it easier to work with if you wanted to use that edge for anything else um, so that weld tool can be really useful to go in and, uh, and start you know welding multiple lines together 
Um, also useful if you've got lots of individual lines um, that have been drawn individually inside a SketchUp. And again, those three lines can be taken and they can all be welded together extremely quickly to give you a single continuous line. Um, so yeah, the ability to weld those tools together or those lines together, again, really quick, really easy. You know, it's not, a, oh my God, wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, but it's something that will speed up your workflows inside of SketchUp. Um, the next one is a real time saver. If you need to go ahead and put a chamfer or a fillet on a component that you are creating. Um, and it's called round corner. Now, um, I'm going to show you a couple of examples on this. So first and foremost, if I just grab um, a very simple little rectangle here, um, and let's go ahead and um, say that we want to put a, a fillet around the top edge of this particular rectangle. Maybe let's just make it a little bit higher. Um, now, typically what we need to do is either um, get close in here, draw a um, an arc on the side and either use um, our, our push-pull um, command up here to, to take away material or indeed draw an arc and then use follow me to go all the way around the outside to create that which, you know, it's not difficult to do that. Absolutely, it's straightforward and pretty quick. Um, but what if I said that you could go ahead and add those even quicker? So if I come up to uh, View, uh, Toolbars, and go and find my um, round corner, uh, just here, turn it on, we get three options. Um, so round corner, um, we get the ability to do, you know, a pretty typical fillet, which gives us filleted edges with a, a filleted corner. Uh, we get a pretty typical chamfer um, with sharp corners and then a chamfer with beveled edges. Um, and essentially, once we select these, we get a, a whole load of options will appear at the top of our screen. I can either go ahead and choose my edges first. Again, I could leverage um, maybe my selection toys up here to say only give my edges. Um, and then just go ahead and hit our fillet button. Um, or fillet option as part of that round corner. And we get a few different parameters on these rollouts. So we've got the ability to look at adding additional edges. We've got some parameters with regards to how smooth we would like to make that segment. So at the moment I'm saying, you know, a three mil fillet essentially on the edge of here. Um, and you can see if I zoom in far enough, it will give me a little preview. So the edge I've got selected is red and where that fillet will be produced is currently green. Um, naturally, if I come in there and say I want to have a bigger fillet, something like 10 millimeters, for example, that will actively update. We can choose more or less segments. So this will create a 10 segment. So it will create a um, 10 faceted um, arc, if you like, which it will use for that. Um, and a whole load of other options in there, which for today we just don't need to go into. If I just come ahead and hit uh, generate geometry. This will just take a couple of seconds and it will literally go ahead and do that for you. Um, so it's gone in and it's created that smooth round edge and created that 10 segment arc and taken that all the way around the side. OK, if I just uh, come out of there, I'm just going to do an undo with Control Z on the keyboard and just show you the same thing with one of the other options, just so you can kind of see the, um, the difference. So grab the edges around the top. This time, maybe I'm going to say that I want to have um, bevel. Again, you can choose your kind of offset. It's a bit far at a meter. So let's uh, choose 50 mil for the purpose of this. Any other options that you want to go for and hit generate. And this time I get a beveled or a chamfered edge rather than the fillet edge. Um, and, you know, if you're using components from maybe 3D Warehouse and they might look a bit sharp, if you're a manufacturer and you're manufacturing um, or putting manufacturing components on here, whether it's, um, you know, sheet metal and you want to very quickly go on and put um, um, a sharp corner and turn it into a flange with a bend radius, for example, you could use this. Um, whether you've got a component, I don't know, you might have drawn up a tap and you want that to look a little bit more aesthetic and a little bit more realistic. This will very quickly go in and allow you to put those round corners on there. And whilst I'm just doing it on the top edge, absolutely, if you want to select all of those edges on that component, make them all round 10 millimeter fillet, we can say, Go ahead and do that. Obviously, it takes a little bit longer with the larger selections, but now I have nice soft edges all the way around that component. You know, again, quick, easy, a lot faster than doing it manually, um, and it gives you a lot of control. So you don't have to um, um, 
be putting up with it making the model overly complicated or too many faces or too many edges um, again one that is very small it's very lightweight um, it's very easy to use um, so yeah give that a download and if you need to go ahead and make round corners it is a bit of a lifesaver um, the next one um, this is not the newest plugin in the world it's been around for a long time um, we've had this uh, this tag functionality now for a little while in SketchUp uh, which I guess is like a layering system um, but I've actually got a, a little plug-in um, again this is a bit of a hidden gem um, called layers manager if I come up to view uh, go to my toolbars and again just scroll down and find my layers panel what this does is it gives me um, two new panels to, to play around with inside of Enscape we have a, a layers panel um, and anyone that's ever used photo editing software like GIMP like Photoshop, PaintShop Pro, anything like that, um, you'll be used to using these kind of intelligent layers. It might also be that you're more used to a, a 2D CAD platform and you're transitioning over to SketchUp um, and you're used to being able to put things onto layers and having a, a good level of control. This layers panel um, gives you that level of control inside of SketchUp using the, the kind of um, same functionality i guess to a certain extent is the tags but it also gives you a little bit more control on there as well so um, again just a couple of quick examples just to keep this nice and, and straightforward and you'll kind of get an understanding from those how you would start using this um, in anger day to day so we'll just draw down a few components again for the purpose of this it really doesn't matter what they are um, and with those individual components um, we can start assigning them layers now these layers we, we've got some groups at the top um, and depending on what groups we have we have a few different options um, what's quite nice by the way is for example if we choose um, um, a render engine that we want these layers to work with i can then say that i want something to be rendered or not so for example i've got a default layer um, i'm going to go ahead and just create a group I'm going to come into this group and just rename it uh, Rob's layers just to show you that uh, we can come in and have uh, um, one or more groups of layers and then inside that uh, that Rob's layers folder or group I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer um, let's just call this one um, cube let's go ahead and uh, create another one in there and we're going to call this cylinder And let's go ahead and make a final one and we'll call this polygon now these three individual layers can be ordered they can have colors assigned to them um, and a load of different other things as well so firstly I'm gonna say select the components or the faces and the edges that make up my cube and I'm gonna grab my cube and I'm gonna say that I want to assign this object to that layer that means this can be turned on and off so i can turn a layer off to turn off the geometry and if i was using a render engine i could say that i do not want to render that object it might only be reference material for example i can go and grab my cylinder put a square on my cylinder and assign this layer and the same with my polygon just here i'm going to assign this layer so we can come and control exactly what's visible and what isn't so that might be walls um, that might be um, I've missed these two components here let's make sure we assign those to the cylinder um, so that might be um, a wall layer a floor layer suspended ceiling layer whatever it might be um, you know we can control this with layers and it works quite well so it allows you to manage those drawings it allows you to manage those models but on top of that we can then start doing um, more so I can lock layers so I could say that my cylinder is locked for example if you lock a layer um, it will allow you to lock the geometry on that layer so that you can't necessarily do things with that geometry that you might otherwise be able to do um, so you know we can we can control that layer with a padlock should we want to um, we can come in and unlock that should we need to we can go and say highlight and select any objects within a layer which is again a quick way of doing multiple selections which is a fantastic workflow we can also use layer states layer states allow you to very quickly go back to a state of things being turned on or turned off using the hierarchy and the intelligence of these layering systems we can purge 
we've got options, we can look at different histories. If I just come in and set up a quick um, a quick layer states, so at the moment everything's turned on. So I'm going to go into my layer state manager over here, and I'm going to say that I want to create a new layer state, and that layer state is going to be all on. It might be then I want to go in and look at um, turning my cubes off and polygon off, create a new one, call that state cylinder only. We can then very quickly switch between those different layer states and they could be controlling 1, 10, 20, 100, however many different layers that you need to. So it gives you layer control of your geometry inside of SketchUp. Again, if you've set that up initially um, and you then go and model your components with that in mind, model your layouts with that in mind, it becomes very quick and very easy to start turning things on and off, controlling what's shown, hiding assets that you don't want to see, hiding components that are, that are only there for reference. And, you know, Again, it's a bit of a hidden gem. Um, it makes things work really well and it does speed up the management and the control of that model moving forwards. Um, so all of those are really accessible. They're easy to use, they're small footprints, and they give you some pretty fast outputs. Um, the next ones are a bit more feature rich. Um, so the first one I'm going to show you is a little tool called Artisan. Um, now, I love this tool mainly because it allows me to do some really cool mesh modeling inside of SketchUp um, really, really easily. So whether you're modeling rocks for landscape design, whether you want to go and model a car, whether you want to go and model an airplane, um, it allows you to do some really nice mesh modeling, but very simply. So, for instance, if I just start in here and just draw a bit of a rectangle and just pull that up into, uh, into that sort of shape. Um, what we can do with this is just grab all of those objects and convert them to, um, uh, to a group. And then once you've got that group, I'm just going to come up to my view toolbars and go and start my artisan uh, tools. We've got a whole raft of tools on here, so we can do some mesh modeling uh, where we can extrude, smooth, and slice things. Uh, we've also got some surface modeling as well where we can start sculpting things. Um, really nice for doing custom landscapes and stuff like that. Um, but in this instance, I can grab um, a group and I can say that I would like to take that group and, um, and subdivide it. Now, what that will do is quite interesting because you'll notice that it's kept the, the main shape of, of my initial um, solid and then it's got a smoother version of that solid inside of it now if i go in and just double click that it will give me some artisan options so i can say that i want to have more iterations to make that inner shape smoother or less iterations to make that shape more um, uh, more polygonal so let's just start this and say we want two iterations and update the subsurface. Um, and then from there, I can literally select my original shape and start working with it. So for example, I can say, grab this particular face over here, and I can grab my extrude tool and extrude this face out. That would directly affect the mesh underneath. If I again go and grab my scale tool, grab the face on the end and scale that face down in any way that I want to, you'll notice that that mesh underneath will come in and it will update. So that will give you um, those updates in real time, so long as this auto update button is turned on, by the way. And that's with any um, functionalities that we are using inside of SketchUp. So any way in which we move this around and, and chop and change this shape, it will start to go in and update that more um, aesthetic or, or smooth form. So that means that I can come in and, and really quickly start making something that um, that might otherwise take you a little bit longer inside of SketchUp. So um, let's just pull this out here about 500 mil on this side and about 500 mil on the other side. Um, let's grab my scale. Let's just scale these right down. I'm just going to eyeball this for the purpose of today. Uh, again, just trying to keep everything nice and simple and, and really do things on the fly rather than having a load of predefined and pre-made demos, which sometimes does pull the wool over the ice. So um, let's just pull these out to the side. I will just type in a distance there um, of around uh, 1800 millimeters. Um, and very quickly, we can start almost sculpting this 
um, in a way that is giving us the ability to, um, he says, won't let me pull that face up. There we go. Um, so let's just bring that upwards a little bit, um, go and grab this front edge, maybe move that backwards a little bit. And we can literally come in and, and start sculpting, in essence, a, a little toy plane or, or um, um, a little model plane or something like that you know this is really down to however your imagination then uh, wants to take you so we can um, pull these components out move them around scale them twist them form them in any way shape or form that you would want to um, to create whatever kind of output that you're after um, you know really easy to work with i'm working with a, a kind of blocky solid um which is really easy to work with. And then it's doing all of the legwork to, to give us this more aesthetic, um, nicer result at the end of it. Um, so, you know, within a minute or so, you could have taken something that is, um, that is quite, quite blobby and you started creating something that actually looks, uh, looks pretty good. And then once you're, you're happy with that, let's just pull this, uh, this cockpit area up a little bit here like so. Um, once you're happy with that, we can then start working with this more. So I could say, okay, well, give me four lots of iterations, update the subsurface, and I can get something that is now really, really smooth. Um, maybe the graphics card's not, uh, not quite up to spec, so you might not have gone all the way up to four iterations because it's creating a lot of edges. Um, but that now gives me um, a really smooth object inside of SketchUp, which is great. We can then start exploding that down if you wanted to. So um, I can um, go into there and right click uh, and explode that to, to get back to um, two forms. So the original group and then the solid. I can then right click and um, erase that original form because I don't need it anymore. And then maybe right click and do a um, further final explode if you wanted to, to really get down to the um, the, the, the plain shapes from, um, from here. So the actual individual faces. I'm not going to for this instance because I've made it very smooth and there would be lots and lots of polygons in there which would probably crash my machine. Um, but again, you know, really quickly, we can make something that looks pretty cool really fast. Um, and then if you wanted to on top of that, I can use that same workflow and that same set of tools in Artisan to start using some sculpting tools. So I could go to my sculpt brush and with that sculpt brush, I can come in and start painting, pushing, pulling, um, so on and so forth to make, a, um, you know, on, on the fly edits, should I want to. Um, again, I'm not going to with this one because it's quite smooth, so I don't want to crash my machine during the demo. But uh, um, yeah, again, another really easy to use tool that just makes things that you can still do inside of SketchUp using other workflows, but it makes it easier. It makes it more user friendly um, and certainly a lot quicker for you to work with those uh, those workflows. So let's just uh, clear that down. Um, unlock it first, thank you, and then delete it. Um, and the next one I'm going to show you is this is one of my um, one of my more favourite tools to be honest with you because it's so easy to use. Um, it's called DBAC. Now I'm going to do a couple of things for this. So I'm just going to say File, go across to Import, and I've got a, a simple floor plan that literally I've just gone and grabbed this from a um, Google image search. Um, so I'm just going to throw a, a floor plan on here. Um, and with this floor plan, it's it's got some dimensions on there. So I'm just gonna go into a top view. Um, so let's uh, grab my camera and just use a top camera view. I'm not too fussed about the perspective for the, for the purpose of today. Uh, but what I wanna do is grab the tape measure and just maybe use one of these dimensions. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's not the most accurate, but for the purpose of what I'm showing you today, it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna measure that to uh, 1820 millimeters. And I want to rescale that image based on that to basically take um, the, the scaling that this architect or design is used to put this floor plan together um, and scale this to the same. So that now this particular area um, is, you know, give or take the same size. I'm then going to start up my, um, my DBAC tools over here. Um, and what you have is a really simple set of tools for drawing walls, whether they're freehand or, or parallel. Uh, placing doors, placing windows, um, and some componentry. Um, 
and this works really well. So we can customize it. I'm not gonna go into that length of detail today, but you can customize um, and add your own doors, your own furniture, your own configurations. This is all out of the box for the purpose of this. Again, no smoke and mirrors. I can say draw a wall. Um, maybe we'd use um, our X-ray mode just to make it a little bit easier to see. And I'm just gonna come in and, and kind of just eyeball this to a certain extent um, and just draw around this plan. Um, obviously the um, the thickness of the wall that I'm drawing is not quite the same as, as what they've got on theirs. Uh, but again, for the purpose of this, it doesn't really matter um, for today. You know, you, you kind of get the idea, you see how it works. Um, and that is, you know, what this is all about, really. So I've drawn some some lines and they are literally at the moment just flat lines inside of SketchUp. They are almost the same as drawing those rectangles. Um, alongside those, I'm going to say that I want to add um, a door. Yes, I've got some parallel wall tools in that I can draw a wall parallel, but I've already traced around my walls, so I don't need that. Um, but what I do want to do is, is maybe place a door. So we've got a double door here leading to the balcony. So I can add two slabs for a double door, one slab for a single door. Um, these options are fine. It gives me a door on the mouse and I can literally come in and, and start um, placing this aligning to um, the, the, the walls and the components that I have in the model. Um, so I can come and kind of eyeball this roughly in the right place on this wall. Although for some reason now the joy of live demos Try that again. It's not snapping to that wall, but it's snapping to that wall. Okay, good. Don't you love a live demo? Let's just uh, do some single doors. We'll come back to that double door in a second. Um, so let's place one on here. Perfect. And then we'll place another one. Why is that not working? How strange. Okay, apologies for that. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, let's just add in a couple of windows here on the side. They should be going pink um, and snapping to the walls. I'm not quite sure why they haven't. Let's just um, take those out, put the walls back in. Clearly something amiss going on. So let's just go in and just work with the external walls rather than the external and the uh, internal. Apologies for that. Um, double door, 721, and then we'll place that over here. Fine, good. So we'll place a double door there. We'll place a single door just by turning slab two off just here. Like so. And again, you could then go and model up those internal walls if we wanted to. So I could go from uh, from here to here to here and back into this wall. And then again, add another door in there if I wanted to on this just here. So you'll notice it's trimming the walls. Does the same with the windows, by the way. So I can come in and add a window and then choose to place that um, wherever I want windows on this particular design. I'll just add a few for the purpose of this. We don't need to go to town on the, on the detail. So we've got a, some walls, we've got a few doors. Um, let's add a component in there as well. So let's say that we wanna add a component. Uh, maybe we'll just use this table as we've got another table in here. So let's place that down and then just show you that we can also use SketchUp default functionality to spin that around and place it in there. Now this is the gen now. So I can now take this, put a window around the whole lot, um, and go ahead and make this into a component, not a component, sorry, a group, my mistake. So grab that and turn it into a group. And then once you've got that, we can basically say, um, go ahead and, um, and convert that group of components into 3D. Uh, and literally, single click, and it will take all the walls, all the windows, the doors, um, the components, and it will convert them into 3D for you. So now within, you know, whilst it took me um, a few minutes because I've been talking through it, um, you know, very quickly, I've been able to produce something that represents that building in 3D very, very quickly, just by tracing over that uh, that floor plan in the background there. Um, so quite a nice workflow and works really quickly. It might be then that we want to leverage some, um, some different parts of this. So that leads me really nicely on to my next tool, um, which is called um, Profile Builder. Profile Builder is really cool. 
um, and actually probably one of um, the more complex tools in, in what it's doing for you automatically, um, in my personal opinion. So um, let's just open it up. Let's go to toolbars. Uh, let's come down and uh, open up Profile Builder using Profile Builder 3 uh, for the purpose of this today. And essentially, we've got a, a load of tools. We'll just focus on a couple of them today just to show you the workflow, uh, which is a working with um, a profile. And then I'll show you some assemblies in there as well. So um, if I go to the profile dialog over here, what this will allow me to do is specify um, a profile to work with. Firstly, absolutely, you can build your own profiles. So you can come in and say that I've got a profile for some coping stones, I've got a profile for some skirting board or some coving or, or whatever it might be. Um, we can create our own profiles using standard SketchUp geometry. Um, I'm being quite lazy today. I'm going to use one out of the box. So I'm going to use the magnifying glass. We get some samples. Um, you know, it's not an exhaustive list. There are a few on there, um, but I'm just going to come in and, and just simply just choose maybe this this base here. And with that base selected, we can choose where the base of that is. So I want the bottom left. Do we want to rotate that around, have an offset at all? Um, literally, I want that as it is. And I can literally click on a build button and then just go and trace over the bottom of my walls. And the profile builder will literally draw that profile around where I'm drawing. So in the purpose of this, I've, I've got this, um, this, this quick building that I've thrown together using, uh, use, using DBAC. Um, and I can start really leveraging um, this tool now to, um, to start adding detail to this. So I can very quickly start adding some skirting boards um, or whatever else I might want to add to the model using a profile. You can also take an existing um, um, a line and add a profile to it. So, for example, if I go back into Profile Builder, um, let's just do a search. Uh, maybe I'll grab this I-beam. Um, this is really also cool for taking existing geometry and SketchUp and doing stuff with it. So uh, let's imagine that, I don't know, this was a flat up on the first floor, or second floor. I need a bit of a structure for this balcony. Um, it might be that I've got some um, some geometry like a load of lines in SketchUp I can say that I want to um, build along a path um, selecting a line build along a path and it will pull that profile along the path if you've got several lines selected doesn't matter how complex those lines are if I go ahead and select them it will build that profile along that path okay once you've got those profiles on there, you can do stuff with them. So if you want to, I could say, great, I've got an I-beam here. I want to draw some fixings uh, or some, some holes for the fixtures. I can use a whole tool, um, choose a shape, choose a diameter. So let's say that I want a, um, an M15 screw through here. So 15 mil diameter, center, 16 segments, and literally add a hole here, here, and here, and then add a hole. Just use your standard snapping and tracking to come across and choose to add holes where you want them. OK, if you don't want a hole there, you can choose to remove said holes. So really flexible. And again, most importantly for today, really easy to use and saving you so much time. We can also use the same thing with assemblies. And again, you can absolutely build your own assemblies. Um, I'm going to cheat today and use one out of the box because I can. Um, so with that assembly dialog box, I can open it, do a little search, and it might be that I want to, uh, maybe I'm doing a garage conversion, and I want to draw some um, some partition walls with some stud work and insulation. We can say, go ahead, draw those partition walls, draw them or assign them to existing geometry, and literally Profile Builder will go and draw those for you. It's just pulling a load of components with some intelligence to give you the right pattern and again we've got a load out of the box that you can use on there um, fences railings um, so for the purpose of this little model here I'm just going to go in and draw a railing using my standard top-down camera we can go and draw the railing using profile builder tracing over what we have for the balcony there so very quickly add that railing to the side. It's a ridiculously quick way 
you know, it's not difficult to draw this geometry in SketchUp. SketchUp is very easy to use, very easy to learn. But using some of these tools, you can save so much time and make yourself so much more productive. So that is Profile Builder. The last one I want to share with you today is um, is Flex Tools. Um, Flex Tools um, is exactly what it says on the tin, really. Um, it is a set of flexible components um, or flexible tools if I can find the toolbar, there we go, um, which give you some, some really nice workflows inside of SketchUp. Um, so again, for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna throw down a couple of these components to show you how they work. Um, so let's look at a couple of examples. So firstly, let's go and put um, a rectangle just here. Uh, let's go and add another rectangle down here. Um, what I can do first of all is say that I've gone down and I've sort of mocked up where I want a window to be. I can use flex tools and say, I want to place a window and I want to place a window on this wall. OK, um, so I can literally come in. And choose to. Um, to place that window on the wall. Once that window is in position, you'll notice it's automatically cut that wall, which is great. Um, it might be that we want to move that so that it's uh, sitting um, where we want it to be. And then with that window, it might be that I want to scale it. Now, sometimes when you scale components inside of SketchUp, um, things don't all scale relatively or, or necessarily work the way that you want them to. Um, in here, these components have all been designed so that they scale um, exactly the way that you would expect them to. So it doesn't matter if you're adding in there a door or a window. Um, we can kind of use standard SketchUp functionality to make those doors bigger, smaller, however it is that they need to be, um, and everything regarding those doors will update correctly. Whether we are matching outline sketches and putting components in place, whether we're placing new components from scratch, those components are dynamic. So we can grab them, we can right click them, and we've got some dynamic component options, such as the ability to swap them, redraw them, look at their internal attributes, or look at their options to say that I actually want that door to be 1012 wide so that we can get a wheelchair for it, for example. Um, I want to be 2010 in height, um, and maybe I want the wall thickness to be a little bit thicker, for example. So 200 mil, for instance. I haven't measured it in this case, but we'll just say 200. Um, these, in some cases, are um, what we call. Um, um, dynamic doors. So um, as well as adding standard components, we can also add dynamic doors. Dynamic doors are, um, are cool because we have the ability to come in and, and, and open them just by clicking on them. The same with dynamic windows. We can literally choose to um, open a dynamic window if we have one in the model. And that's a lifesaver when it comes to doing a render or, or doing some shots for a customer um, because, you know, we can quickly open something really quickly. And again, if they're dynamic, we can still resize them. So I can grab that opening window. I can go ahead and use the SketchUp scaling tool and I can make this bigger. I can make it smaller. I can make it longer. I can change how many sash bars I want to have across it. Um, and it will all update relative and give me the kind of results that you would expect. OK, um, it, it just works and it works really well. You can see that there are a number of different options for doors, square windows, windows with an angle. Um, we've got panels on here if you want to draw up um, a panel system on the exterior of a building. We've got stairs, ramps, uh, you name it. There's a number of different tools in here that, that really do give you some awesome options inside of SketchUp. You've also got the ability to change any of these into um, nicer floor plan um, components. So if I grab this door, for example, and hit this button here, um, we can toggle plan view on and off for specific components to say whether we want them to work better in a plan view um, and what that will mean is when we look at this physically from the top down um, it will take the um, the imprint if you like from that component and make it work better and work faster for those plan views um, so you know if i undo you'll notice that we've got the lock in there we've got the handle uh, we've got the latch mechanism if you make something more compatible with a plan view 
it will just simplify that and strip it out so that we don't have that information on our plan because you know quite frankly we don't need it on there if we we're only working in plan we have a load of other options in there that just make this um, really easy to work with and really easy to use but the crux of it is a set of flexible tools that we can come in and use quickly we can come in and use easily and we can right click and edit those dynamic components to to basically have you know whatever number of, of, of divisions attributes spacing any parameters that you want you have out of the box functionality that just kind of works and does what you would expect it to do when you would expect it to do it um, again we just don't have the, the time to go through and, and show you all of the bells and whistles for each of these little plugins today um, but you know at the end of the day these are fast quick wins where you can leverage something that is designed to make your lives a lot easier um, and really you know those tools are, are all I kind of plan to show today in honesty um, so again just to kind of bring them all up um, on the screen just so we can just again just do a quick recap about all of the things that we've talked about this afternoon for the past 45 minutes or so um, we have a number of different tools um, some of these are, are hidden gems um, some of them have been around for an awful long time um, there, panel. there we go um, but we have first of all selection toys fantastic way in which I can say select a load of objects go and limit that to only select faces select a load of objects go and only select my components so it really makes it easy to filter down your selections whether you're selecting or deselecting we have a layers manager where we can have an actual layers manager um, akin, akin to the likes of um, you know what you might have in Photoshop or GIMP or something like that we can also work with layer states to control the visibility of those layers if you want to add fillets to a component we have round corner really quickly adding um, bevels chamfers or fillets onto a component um, we've used weld to weld multiple lines together to create um, polylines for example inside of sketchup we've worked with artisan for mesh modeling or indeed surface painting we've used profile builder to work with profiles and pulling them around um, we've used DBAC for taking a 2D floor plan and generating 3D from that automatically. And then finally, we've finished with flex tools to show you some dynamic, flexible components and how they can really speed up your workflows inside of SketchUp. And really, um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. Um, so I do hope that's been useful. I can notice out of the corner of my eye that I've had questions and comments popping up as I've been talking. Um, so what I'm going to do is just give me a couple of seconds. Um, we're going to have a bit of an open Q&A. So if you do have a question, then please use the panel on the right hand side of your screen to ask, uh, ask away. And I will do my, um, my best to, um, to answer those questions. Um, so yeah, let's just have a little look through. What have we got? Um, is the question, uh, sorry, is the presentation being recorded? Yes, we have recorded the presentation. The presentation will go on to the Elm Tech UK um, YouTube channel. Um, and if we don't have a chance to get that up there today, it will certainly be on there um, over the next few days or so for you to rewatch should you want to. Uh, so yes, we are uh, recording, which is great. Um, so another question all these plugins that you have mentioned are they all free um, unfortunately not all of them are free um, some of the the latter ones are paid for um, but there are a number of plugins that we have shown during this webinar that are completely free of charge um, if you just go on to the extension warehouse you can you can have a little look um, and you'll be able to download all the free ones and most of the paid for ones have trials that you can have a play with as well um, question from Oscar, afternoon Oscar. Um, all versions have all the toolbars shown here. Um, so yeah, I'm using SketchUp 2020. To my knowledge, everything that I've used goes back at least a couple of years uh, for older versions of SketchUp. Um, some of them, if not longer, um, check the extensions um, page on Extension Warehouse and they have the, the support and the compatibility on there. Um, uh, Jeremy's asked a question about UV mapping to Artisan. Um, does it work well? 
I've not used it that much, to be honest with you, Jeremy, the UV mapping, so it would be unfair of me to, di to make a direct comment now. Um, I think that's a question that we'll take offline um, and maybe we can have a chat about uh, how it compares to other software out there. But uh, at this point, I've mainly just used the mesh modeling tools inside of Artisan, so I won't comment on that. Um, a few other questions popping up. So I have a question. What is the best tool or plugin for creating 3D buildings from photos? Um, very good question. I guess there is a, a, a bigger query behind that. Um, obviously, when you've got a when you've got a photo, SketchUp will be able to go in and uh, and, and photo match that um, um, the view of that photo so that you've got the right perspective in there. Um, it depends on what you mean by creating 3D buildings from photos. If you're actually wanting something to go in and, and create some geometry for you automatically, as such, uh, again, perhaps a question for offline because I think there's probably a bit more detail for that one. Um, what else have we got on here? Um, another question about everything working in older versions of SketchUp. Yes, to my knowledge, um, Tiago, everything's working in, in SketchUp 2019, absolutely, and if not, earlier than that as well. So yeah, just check the, the relevant page for the, the plugin in question. Um, some questions about pricing. I'm, I'm just a technical guy, so I stay well aware from pricing if I can. Um, but um, anyone that's asked a question about pricing, then um, we can get in touch offline and, and put some bits in front of you because of that. Um, I can't find DBAC for SketchUp Pro 2020. Yeah, I'm using SketchUp Pro 2020. You can download DBAC for SketchUp Pro 2020. It's on. Uh, it's out there. I don't know if DBAC's actually on the extension warehouse. You might have to Google that one, uh, but it's definitely available for 2020. No problems at all. Um, yes, many of them are available for SketchUp 2018. That's fine. Uh, yes, and 2020. That's what I'm using today. Um, and the last question that I can see, we're a little bit pushed for time, so I'll just answer a few more of these. Um, materials are different layers. It depends on your render engine. Um, to be honest with you, I've not tried it with anything other than out of the box. So yeah, it would depend on your render engine whether you can assign materials to those layers using that layer manager. Um, what plugin would you recommend for making terrain from contours? Um, there are a few. Um, again, we'll take that one offline. Um, there are a few different options for you. It depends what uh, what format your contours are in, I guess. Um, you could also look at something like Placemaker, which works really well. But um, yeah, we'll take that one offline. Um, I'm not going to provide any opinions on anything that I haven't dem demonstrated today. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, got a couple of questions about plugins that I haven't yet demoed in this session today. So it'd be unfair for me to comment. So I won't talk about those. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any other questions pop up for the last couple of minutes, so I will stay on the session. Anyone with further questions, just uh, jump on and ask them. I'll stay on for a few more minutes, but um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for your time. Um, appreciate many of you are busy, so thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, I hope you continue to stay safe and well. Um, it certainly looks like we're winning the battle against this COVID-19 pandemic. So um, fingers crossed things will be getting back to whatever the new norm looks like over the next few months. But um, thank you for your time. I hope it's been useful. Stay safe. Keep washing those hands. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Thank you very much. couple of questions that have popped up that I'm just going to answer very quickly before I log off. Um, again, I said that I wouldn't meant answer questions for things that I haven't shown. I did mention um, um, no, sorry, getting confused between two different questions. Can you create roads from Profile Builder? I guess there's nothing stopping you creating roads. Um, it just takes an object and it will allow you to, to push that around. So whether that's a 2D profile or, or a 3D component, um, I can't see why not. I've not done it myself, but um, yeah, by all means, uh, you should be able to download and have a look at that on the, on the trial version. Um, yeah, no problems at all. 
Um, another new question that just popped up, is there a way to do SketchUp 3D for an entire space of an outdoor festival or exhibition? Um, absolutely, SketchUp is more than capable of modeling, whether it's very small or very large components and models. Um, and spaces and landscapes. So yeah, absolutely, you could um, you could go and model an entire 3D area and space for an exhibition. Um, I've not gone as far as uh, as miles, so I guess if you wanted to go and model something like the Glastonbury Festival, um, yeah, I've not got any experience of modeling something quite that big. Depend on on how large a space you're talking, but yes, short answer is yes. Um, good. Okay. Can't see any other things popping up. So if you have asked a question and I haven't answered it, we will get back to you offline um, and drop you an email in response. But again, for those of you that are left, thank you very much for your time. Um, and we will catch you again next time. This recording will be on YouTube in due course. So enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Cheers now. Goodbye.